A digital stereoscope amplifier is discussed in this example that is the 214th video in the circuit analysis playlist. At the input we have the sensing device which is or sensor which is basically just a microphone and then we have right after that we have the signal conditioning interfacing unit that takes care of amplifying which is highlighted here with dual stage op amp design and also signal filtering, noise cancellation, noise uh, reduction. Okay, usually there is also a direct microphone output access before amplifier, basically the signal X of T that is coming from inside this unit that is coming from the microphone, usually there is a direct access to it before amplification. But what we want to see is how does this circuit work and what is the input output transfer function, voltage transfer function in the sense that the signal generated by amplifier or microphone coming in and then it is amplified by the first stage and then after that further filtered and amplified by the second stage and then what we get at the output. These two stages are both doing the filtering and amplification. Okay, so uh, with that said, there are many commercially available solutions, of course. So uh, as an example, just uh, illustrating one case, here is uh, the case of uh, solution available from 3M, which is a 3M Litman core digital stethoscope with a up to 40x amplification in the amplifier and as you can see here is a 3d view there is a double head for the stethoscope which allows uh, usage of it for both adults and kids and also right below, below the head there is the signal condition and amplification unit that is shown so with that said let's go back to our analysis so in the analysis uh, we have signal x of t that is coming in and we want to analyze and see what happens Okay, so uh, I'm not going to focus on the bias side, but bear in mind that there is a connection for the DC bias of the microphone. So, and there is also, of course, a DC connection for the bias, proper biasing of the input of the operational amplifier. We have op amp one, op amp two, and the assumption is, of course, we have the right connection in terms of the voltage. So if, for example, we are using single supply design, in this case, one side of op amp is grounded, the other side is connected to five volt for both op amps. So we make the assumption that both op amps are uh, basically in linear region of operation properly biased. So op amps in linear region, they are not saturated. And as a result, virtual short is valid, which means the positive input terminal of op amp has the same voltage as negative input terminal of the op amp. So that is valid and enforced by the negative feedback. Okay, so with that said, then what happens is at uh, frequency range of interest, so what usually what happens is for signal X of T in frequency domain, let's say X of omega or F, so frequency domain view, what matters to us is a minimum frequency range, and then we want this uh, amplification happens for from a minimum frequency to, let's say, a maximum frequency that matter to us uh, for the co frequency content of the signal X of T that is uh, basically obtained by the microphone and then after that we don't care we want to just kill because it will be useless signal or let's say uh, noise that we want to get rid of okay so this is the sort of a response we are interested in and uh, let's find the f min and f max for uh, and also the amplification level uh, for these uh, stages that are shown in this design basically okay so in that process uh, just bear in mind that in the frequency range of interest, so what I'm saying is between F min and F max on the frequency axis, so that we get this sort of a response, uh, whatever it is, for instance, if it is uh, 10, which I'm going to show you, then uh, for this range, the system is designed in a way that this one microfarad capacitor is basically just a decoupling cap. So the AC signal coming in doesn't have any, or, and its corresponding DC bias doesn't have anything to do with the DC bias of op amp, so they're isolated. But from AC analysis perspective in this range, the one microfarad is basically short. Okay, and also in the frequency range of interest, this sort of a stabilizing cap is just basically open because it is too small. It's it. The keep in mind that the impedance of cap is simply one over uh, basically. Uh, JC Omega, and uh, as long as uh, C is very small for the range of frequency of interest, uh, then the X of C is pretty large. So we can make the assumption basically in this frequency range of interest, one microfarad and this cap both are short, while 27 picofarad is basically open. So we don't care about that. All right, so what, what's going to happen with this description? We are going to have effectively 
uh, I'm going to redraw the first uh, the first amp stage amplifier here. So 10 microfarad, and then we have a resistor uh, R. Let's say this one is 10 kilo ohm. So we have a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Let's name them as uh, C, for example. Let's say A and R A, stage one, and then we have connection to input terminal of the op amp negative or inverting terminal and positive terminal effectively is grounded ac wise so i'm gonna sorry not grounded effectively is connected to the input signal that is coming in so we have effectively the connection to x of t and then what we have after this we have just uh, effectively what we have is we have just a feedback loop so we have rf and we have CF for the non-inverting amplifier. And this goes to the output of the op amp. So let me move this op amp bias for the second stage here so that we have enough space. And then we can just write this output. So RF is 100K as shown. And then we have 560 picofarad for the CF. So I'm going to write 560 picofarad. And here's the output of a stage one, V01. And input, let's instead of X of T, just refer to it as uh, V in T, as a function of time. So that is the, basically, output of the microphone uh, from, the from the digital stethoscope. So in this case, what is the in uh, response of this stage? So the response of this stage is simple. Uh, so it's going to be V out one as a function of V in one in S domain. So it's going to be as a function of S is equal to one plus. Basically, uh, the feedback impedance, which in this case is RF in parallel with one over CFS. And then we have the series of 10 kilo ohm and 10 microfarad. So it's going to be basically RA1. So let's all name these ones as RF1 and CF1 because these are stage one. So RF1 and CF, CFS, so CF1S, and RA1 plus 1 over CF1S. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is if we simplify, given the values we have, which are 10K, 10 microfarad, and 100K, 560 picofarad, so you can find that the result will become 1 plus. So let me just write it here. So for the first stage, the transfer function of so this is the transfer function of the first stage so for the first stage the transfer function is simply one plus and then we have um, so it's going to be r f one and then we will get sorry this is ca1 okay we get ca1 s and then we have one plus r a1 ca1 S and then one plus RF one CF one S. Remember, recall that these two are RA one CA one, and these two guys are RF one CF one. One refers to the stage number. So if we just simplify this whole thing, we are going to get basically one plus, and uh, it will be as simple as just S one plus point one S, and then one plus we will get for uh, the R2C2, we'll get 5.6, 10 to the power minus 5S. So what is the meaning of this? The meaning of this is we are going to get basically, uh, so from this outcome, we're going to get one uh, pole here. So this generate one pole for us. So omega P1 is effectively 10 uh, radian per second, which translate to FP1, so the frequency is roughly 1.6 hertz, that means this frequency. And this one generate the second pole for us, so omega P2 is going to be uh, 1 over 5.6, 10 to the power minus 5, which results in FP2 effectively on the order of 2.84 kilohertz. So, kilohertz. Okay, so that means the F max. So for example, in this case, we are just interested in this range for 
uh, for this design. We can, of course, adjust these according to what is the required spec for a given stethoscope or application. All right, so we can repeat this analysis for the second stage as well, but basically the uh, response of the system is like this. For the, re the reason that we have one as a constant, so uh, basically the circuit on the lower side is just one, on the upper side is going to be 11. Reason for 11 is uh, this, this stage in the mid frequency range, meaning that in this range of frequencies between the minimum 1.6 and maximum 2. Point, uh, maximum 2.84 kilohertz, we can just assume that in, in that range, this one, this component is pretty small. So basically, let's say when F frequency of input is between 1.6 hertz and let's say 2.84 kilohertz, then the response of system simply becomes 1 plus uh, 1, and then there is 0.1s, so 1 over 0.1, which is 11. And that makes sense because it effectively means for the mid range, mid for the let's say bandpass uh, of this filter, which is a bandpass filter effectively that we have in this amplifier, bandpass filter and amplification, this one is open, this one is short, and therefore effectively in the bandpass we only have RF100K and then we only have RA110K. So it, in that non-inverting amplifier the gain is of course 1 plus 100K divided by 10K which is 1 plus 10 which is 11. So the second stage looks exactly uh, like that. The only so basically, from perspective of a steady state in 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 band or inside the bandpass filter gain, we still deal with 100k divided by 10k, which means uh, one plus uh, 10 or 11 total gain. But then uh, the response is a little bit different because this cap 100 picofarad is different than this cap 560. So if we uh, draw, uh, let's say. Uh, the circuit for the second stage, I'm going to just do it here. So it will look like this for the second stage. And uh, the input is coming from the output of the first stage and it goes to the input. So this is the, um, let me just show you with the different color. So this was our first stage. And this one is our second stage. And in second stage, the only difference is this cap is now 100 picofarad. Uh, the rest of the circuit is the same. We have 100K, we have 10K, we have 10 microfarad, as we have here. So therefore, uh, everything in terms of the analysis is very similar. The only outcome, the only difference is now we have H2 of S, which is 1 plus, uh, now it's going to be RF2. CA2, so this is CA2, RA2, let me just highlight it, CA2, RA2, and then we have RF1, RF2, and we have CF2. So CF2. So in this case, we have RF2, CA, uh, CA2 in numerator times S, and then we have 1 plus RA2, CA2, S, and 1 plus RF, so RF2, and then CF2, S. So it's, um, this is the transfer function. It has, similar to the first stage, it has one zero. So basically, uh, the zero of this system, basically SZ, let's say, is exactly zero. And that's the reason we have this sort of a response. So at the beginning, between frequencies zero and F min, the response is going up, but then hitting at, like a body plot. So you can think of this as a body plot for the magnitude response uh, representation. And then after we hit the F min, uh, this poles and zero cancel out each other, we're going to have a uh, constant response and then hitting the second pole at f max then we're going to drop by 20 db per decade and before that we were increasing by 20 db per decade which means every 10x frequency uh, it's going to increase by uh, 10 db okay so the response here will look like then similar to what i said for the first stage uh, like this guy the response will look like then one plus uh, again s 
and again one plus point one s because this part is the same as the first stage that's why we're going to get the one plus point one s but then uh, the other part is going to be this part so the second part which is related to the feedback resistor and capacitor is looking a little bit different and it would be basically one plus and uh, instead of 5.6 we just have basically one so it will be 10 to the power minus 5 s so same as uh, the other one this one provide us with omega p1 of the second stage which is again 10 radian per second so 10 radian per second which means similar to the sorry omega p1 meaning that the first pole of the second stage and fp1 for the second stage so these are four second stage so these are four first stage okay so we get fp1 similar to the first stage as 1.6 hertz and for this one here we get uh, omega p2 now is 1 over 10 to the power of minus 5 which is basically 10 to the power of 5 radian per second which means then fp2 for the second stage is of course 10 to the power of 5 divided by 2 pi hertz which is then turn out to be 15.9 uh, kilohertz roughly okay so what is the what is the meaning of uh, these computations so it, ha it basically means we have another bandpass filter in this form that is uh, shown for the first stage the only difference is f min is same as before 1.6 but f max is now different i mean we can play with these and adjust them but basically we have a cascade of bandpass filter and amplification by these two stage design uh, and it uh, removes the uh, high frequency component beyond the f max effectively all right i hope that this example of uh, showing effectively uh, we get gain of 11 for the mid band of the bandpass filter for each stage and effectively with these double stage we can get up to 121 total gain and then uh, we can cancel out any noise below 1.6 hertz with this design and we can cancel the noise above 2.84 and especially above 15.9 kilohertz in the second stage i hope this example is helpful to understand uh, how for example we can do basic signal conditioning and uh, noise cancellation by the combination of bandpass filter and uh, amplification implemented uh, using two stage of op amp design for interfacing in digital stereoscope amplifier thanks for watching